Hello citizens of the internet. We are anonymous. In the early 1960s, the Joint Chiefs of Staff drew up a plan called Operation Northwoods in which they planned a series of attacks against American civilians and the hijackings of planes so they could blame it on Cuba as a pretext to an invasion against Cuba. We didn't learn about that until the 1990s, more than 30 years later. That secret was kept. But just how are these secret military operations and research programs financed? And wouldn't the means of securing financing have to be detailed for the president? Perhaps in a book of secrets. Information, for example, concerning the president's black budget. Quite imagine what the handbook would look like. But hey guys, good evening. Um, God bless you all. Anyway, I have some information that I want to share with you all. April 24, 2001, declassified documents reveal U.S. military plan for attacks against Americans in 1960s to justify an invasion against Cuba. Uh, and I'm going to go on. These are de according to declassified documents again. Uh, James Banford's book, Body of Secrets, reveals a secret U.S. government plan. Some of you may have heard of this, named Operation Northwoods. All details of the plan came, come from declassified military documents. This is a part of it here. Um, according to Associated Press, uh, the heads of the U.S. military, all five joint, joint chiefs of staff, proposed in a 1962 memo to stage attacks against Americans and blame Cuba to create a pretext for invasion. Says one document, we could develop a communist Cuban terror campaign in the Miami area, in, all, in other Florida cities, and even in Washington. We could blow up a U.S. ship in Guatemala Bay and blame Cuba. Casualties, casualty list in U.S. newspapers would cause a helpful wave of indignation. In March 1962, Lyman L. Leminster, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, presented the Operation Northwoods plan to President John F. Kennedy. And we all know what happened to John F. Kennedy, God bless his soul. Um, I don't even got to tell you, he was assassinated, probably a, uh, a hit by the CIA. Um, but the plan was sent to John F. Kennedy and Defense Secretary Robert McNamara. The plan was rejected, of course. The plan was rejected by Kennedy, and then he was taken out, probably by the CIA. Um, Lemoninster then sought to destroy all evidence of the plan. Lemoninster was replaced a few months later, but the Joint Chiefs, Ch Joint Chiefs continued to plan a pretext operations at least through 1963. According to ABC News, uh, you can click it here and you can go to um, historycommons.com or .org, and you can read this yourself. One suggestion in the plan was to create a remote-controlled drone duplicate of a real civilian aircraft. The real... Get... Wait a minute. One suggestion in the plan was to create a remote-controlled 
drone duplicating <laughs> of a real civilian aircraft. Interesting. The real aircraft would be loaded with selected passengers, all boarded under carefully prepared al uh, aliases, and then take off with the drone duplicate simultaneously taking off. You got to hear this, guys. Nearby. The aircraft with passengers would secretly land at a U.S. military base while the drone continued along the other plane's flight path. The drone would then be destroyed over Cuba, or how about flown into the World Trade Center or the Pentagon, in a way that places the blame on Iraq, this time, this case, Cuban fighter aircraft. Now, this sounds very, very similar to what possibly could have happened on I-1. Now you just wonder what is going to be exposed 40 years from now. Some 911 skeptics will claim that 911 attacks could have been orchestrated by elements of the U.S. government and see Northwoods as an example of how top U.S. officials could hatch such a plot. Now, this is interesting, and I would like everybody to spread this article around. Okay, and I'm going to show you something else. If you guys didn't know, back in two, or 1975, there was a... Here, let me move this up here. There was, see here, 1975, there's a World Trade Center fire. Um, and what I want to read here is it involved, I think, uh, six floors. But this is the critical part I want you to read. I'm going to read it to you here. Much was learned from the 1975 World Trade Center fire. In particular, the fact that the fire had not been contained to a single floor but spread to many floors caused much concern. The points, of, the points of entry of the fire to other floors were identified and the floors of each building were modified to make sure that this would never happen again. For some strange reason, right there, the modifications failed to perform on September 11, 2001 and again the fire spread from floor to floor. Maybe a little bombing or a little planted bombs um, was planted in this side of this World Trade Center to overcome these modifications. Guys, I'm telling you right now, this is going to be a very dark day in America when when the truth really is revealed to everybody. But the question remains, will everybody accept the truth? Or will everybody deny the truth? I mean, we're seeing it already. I mean, we're being, I mean, 911 truthers. We're being smeared left and right. Because we won't go with the norm. We won't believe the government's uh, uh, um, nonsense story we're supposed to believe. Okay, don't tell me Mr. Noodle was the mastermind, okay, behind the world trade. And you know what I'm talking about, but this is just crazy. Um, and here is the actual article to the actual article. 1975 World Trade Center fire burned six floors for three hours. Um, Sixteen men were injured. Um, right here. You can read it all. Sprinklers urged for the Trade Center. Again, guys, I'm going to tell you again. Um, it makes you wonder. It really makes you wonder here. Modifications were overcome. They assured that this would never happen again. But yet it happens again. I mean, yeah, some will argue that it, uh, is plane with jet fuel, real hot jet fuel, caused this. I mean, but come on. How the heck did those towers come down to the speed of gravity? I'm going to keep digging. But this was very interesting here, this false flag. 1962, our own government military planned to attack Americans and kill us. It's right here. And it looks very eerily similar to what happened in 911. And I'm going to read this one more time. One suggestion in the plan was to create a remote controlled drone or aircraft duplicate of a real civilian aircraft. Flight 175, possibly. The real aircraft would be loaded with selected passengers. Think about this. All boarded under carefully prepared alias, aliases, um, aliases, uh, and then take off with the drone duplicate simultaneously taking off nearby. The aircraft passengers would secretly land in the U.S. military base, while the drone continues along the other plane's flight path. The drone would then be destroyed over Cuba in a way that places the blame on Cuban fighter aircraft. Uh, this is just nuts. But I wanted to do this video on 7 Minutes. God bless you all. Spread it. 
um, historycommons.org. I'd say that there are things that George Bush 41 and I know that not too many other people know. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.